Okay, you all voted for this, and I'm going to play Death Stranding while, uh, while we suffer through the consequences of your democratic vote, okay? Divorce dad energy? Yes, democracy is, you know, truly what I'm conditioning you all to feel throughout all of this is that democracy is a mistake. <laughs> that's, that's honestly the main lesson from my show. Okay. For like a beauty license. Yes. I mean, how often? Every two years. And what's the test like? I do 15 minutes of sex trafficking, and then you gotta do five hours of just continual education. Would you say sex trafficking? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is, you're gonna have to give what? Honestly, if this was anyone but Steven Crowder, I'd be like, this is actually, like, you, you know, I, I'm in favor of this as a concept, you know? Like, going going and, like, talking with average people in a barbershop. I think that's a decent concept for, like, a journalistic show. I just don't trust Steven Crowder to do this well at all. You know, I, I, I don't trust him to do this. Yeah, like, I, where, where, when does the other shoe drop here? I give it 30 minutes before he starts asking people for the N-word pass? I'm, I wonder. Because, like, part of me wonders if he's, like, this is being born out of, like, desperation, and so he's trying to get people to think that he's normal, you know? You think he'll pass get it? <sighs> That's... That's it. Shallow pudding man. Okay, well, we're a minute and 40 seconds in, and he just asked if uh, she thought Bill Cosby did it. Right? For conversation in the black community. Do you think Bill Cosby did it? Cool. Haha, we're opening up this segment, and do you, do you think that Bill Cosby did all of those rapes? is insane, dude. That's... That's interesting. Pudding man. And what did I find? Are black and white Americans as far apart from each other as we've been told? Well, see for yourselves. This is black and white on the gray issues. You know what it is? It's white bitches. I'm not gonna... Oh! <laughs> oh, I don't give a... You're good with these two right here. It's, it's white women. Okay, let me ask you this. Has there ever been a group of people that has had it better than a white, and yes, I mean white women, not even white men, white women in the 21st century who complain more? Think about it. Everything, it's like, they have all the benefits of being like a protected class, but they're also just white people. So, you know, they just, and everything is a complaint. And those are the ones who always get offended. Like you saw at SMU, they come like, you can't say that. Well, like, what the hell? And that's how this started. Like, I would say, like, that's racist. I'm like, what's racist? Say that black people make better comedians? Like, have you heard of Richard Pratt? Like, that's a, that's a compliment. Like, I'm a comic. They're like, you can't say that. That's a stereotype. They say it for black people, white women. You're just like, you just shut up. Some people always just want to be heard and be seen. Saying say a lot, but yeah. not saying anything at all. I know. You know, so it, it's, it's a, 
white women, white people, <laughs> you know, they have it easy. No, it's not like that because I'm not that type of dude. The white people do have it easy, but white women, absolutely, I absolutely agree with you. I'm, I'm terrified. You know, what gets me was, or is, I've been sitting at a light, downtown Dallas. Yeah. And some people, uh, I walk by, they lock their door. Yeah. It's like, man, I, I have nothing. I, I, I would do nothing, anything to you, but just to be- Well, yeah, they like, also get to the it. teardrop tattoo and think and that means you bag somebody, you know? You, know, that, you gotta my, give them that. <laughs> But I'm, 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 not, I'm not the guy that's unapproachable. Though. I know. So, I always put a wild that. That means he's been initiated. No. Oh, <laughs> I saw Grand Torino. I know how this shit ends. What? Yeah, I was like, I, I don't think, I don't think that's very specific right there. You just seen that, and you kind of like, oh, yeah. just shift to the. No, yeah, like I, I tell you what, if if like po if I didn't know Post Malone, and I was driving, I would lock my doors. You know, I'd hide my cocaine. Yeah, I'm goddamn. I ain't got all this shit on my face. But I, I mean, that's why it makes it stand out more, though, because it's like you're making a statement. Like, oh, did you see this? Because <laughs> no. if like, someone has like a bunch of tattoos, you just think they're a hipster. You know what I mean? But the teardrop, you think like, okay. see, well, because I come from, I was raised in Montreal, um, where the crazy thing is people don't realize like the biker gangs there. Um, 100, and, I think it was 116 people were killed in the decade. From biker gangs, uh, like the biker gangs from the city. So, six, 16 people a year in, in Montreal were killed due to biker violence. Uh, uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Biker. Yeah, yeah. The 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 insidious biker pro problem on the mean streets of Montreal. Yeah. Okay, Steven. Here, yeah, you're so like, hard. We won't send the Hell's Angels, but like, we're not going to send anyone out to Montreal. They're incredibly violent because they have the ports that will, uh, everything comes in through the ports in Montreal before it gets to New York. And so people kind of know there, it's not like a teardrop tattoo, but if you see that like three piece rocker, you just, it's it's a sign. They're letting you know. So it's the same thing in certain areas in the States, right? If they see, like in LA, if you see a teardrop, for sure. I mean, I lived in Inglewood for a while. If I saw teardrops there, I would, I'd be like, all right. I don't wear red, don't wear blue, you know, just stay neutral. This would be the worst shirt to wear when I was in Inglewood. I was all earth tones and beige and khaki and shit. <laughs> but I, under, I understand what you're saying, but it is, it is. I'm being stereotyped though. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, I, I get it. But I, I'm one of the people, I guess you have to get to know me. Yeah. You know? Well, that's a sin with a lot of, what I was saying too, like I'm stereotyping now, like we can't be code blind because that's stupid. Uh, and then you can't just make it the sole identifying factor, right, is, is race. Like, there's a middle ground, like, recognizing the differences and being like, that isn't what defines you. I mean, it's the same thing with anything, whether it's, you know, sexuality, orientation. It's like, okay, that's a part of you. So when people are like, I don't see color, it's like, so I know you're a liar. Like, that's not true. But you also don't want to be like all black people, all white people. And I know the irony's not lost to me. I just said white f but that's largely true. Um, it is a, it's a weird, uh, it's a weird time where you kind of have to pick one of these two lands and, and neither one is necessarily helpful. And, uh, you know, what, what's interesting here is that he's ostensibly going here to, uh, like get their perspectives, but really what's happening here is that he's just m talking at them to get them to nod along with what he's saying, you know, that's, that's the main point he's trying to make here. It's a, it's just, it really is often, like, I will tell you this, my interactions with, generally speaking, like, if I hold a door open, this is happening, everyone will tell you, especially after, like, Me Too era, the Me Too era, if I hold a door open for a black woman, you just say, thank you. If you hold, a, if I hold, if I hold a door open for a white woman, either they don't say thank you, like, I can do it myself. It's like, well, I didn't mean to ruin your whole day like that. What? You know, I was just trying to, like... I'll take things that have never happened for $500. Like, this isn't... No, 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 no one is like, hmm, how dare you open a door for me? Like, no, no one does this. He, he's making it up. His source is that he pulled it out of his ass. Like, what do you think? I'm gonna, do you think I'm trying to sexually assault you, holding a door open? Like, I have better interactions, and this is what we, like, one, one of those, I'm guessing, like, I have better interactions 
generally speaking, with black women and white women, specifically, just because you can talk and they're not looking for a reason to be offended all the time. Those are your experiences. I have yeah. those experiences on both sides. I think yeah. that's up going to Sure. Uh, the way you brought up and the way you are, because I've held a door before a black woman and she just walk on through and I'll be like, okay, well, you know, yeah. I've held a door before a white woman and she's done the same sure. thing. So, but white and black have said thank you as well. But some some women, women, period, if I hold the door open yeah. and they don't say that, I'll say, well, okay, well, yeah. you know, I'll do it like that. I'm sarcastic. Yeah. So, what's her what warrior names? My name is Maya. Maya? I'm Jazz. I feel like what we're going to be seeing throughout this is just Steven Crowder uh, saying insane shit and these perfectly nice people trying to, like, give him the benefit of the doubt while they try and parse the idiocy that's coming out of his mouth, you know? Jeff, it's nice to meet you. I won't, I won't shake your hand leave the mouse and stuff in there. Mess up. But, okay, let me ask you, Maya. If you're just sitting there like you're just going about your day in the day and a man compliments you, like says, like, oh, you have, you have beautiful skin, or oh, I like your hair, does that make you uncomfortable? No. See? Most white women answer yes. No. No. That's, no. I, that's, that's my, been my experience. Crazy. Like, I will specifically hold back compliments with white women. And I mean, I, I say because I'm not one of them going to compliment right. a white or black dude. You know, unless it's his teardrop tattoo, like, that's very good work. You should let your artist know. But um, yeah, I will hold back because uh -huh. you will get some. It's a 50 50 shot. They'll get mad. And that's just, I think, comes from, you know, maybe more traditional uh, views of kind of decorum and yeah. chivalry where it seems like black women, are, no even if they don't appreciate data, it, aren't offended by vibes. it. Like, white men have to, they walk on eggshells all the time. Where that's a big reason we uh, want to talk about I... it. Like, let me, and okay, let me ask you this. To deliver stuff and this to is a weather station. It's just a statistical reality. Why do you think that 70% of suicides in the United States, 70% are white men? Like, consider because we often people think they have it really easy, but it's just they're twice as likely to just off themselves as black men. So it's crazy high. Honestly, I believe sometimes stability is one, one of the biggest ones, honestly, because they have such a. Um, prestige way about wanting to be the upper class, I would say, mm -hmm. put it that way. And um, like when it's hard times, a lot of people, I won't just say white, but a lot of times black people come from hard times mm -hmm. and white people are kind of don't sometimes. I won't say everybody. Yeah. Because you have a different life experience, but just from an overall world spectrum, yeah. You, it seems like when it gets a little harder, it's hard for them. I think that's part of it. I think that's part of it. I and think... the pressure of the family. Because there's a lot of pressure dealing with the family. Being the, the man of the house, you know what I'm saying? Not just the man, but the provider, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think it's okay. No, there's definitely, I, I think it's I think it's that, and I think it's combined with the fact that, I mean, it, like, you know, we talk about sort of white, because a lot of, like, modern feminism is spearheaded by sort of American, maybe Canadian white women, where it's check your, check your privilege, shut up. You're a white man. There's no way you can have anything going on. It's a struggle. Exactly. Um, and they don't have the same community. Like, I think one thing that maybe black people take for granted compared to a lot of white people yeah, is no, like, this, does, very, this isn't a thing very much like for, a shot for a lot of right. white men. And so what happens is they feel ashamed and they feel isolated from those pressures. Mm -hmm. And they just feel like there's no way out. And well, I better not complain because I'm a white man. So, you know, I must have it easier than everyone. And it's... And it's a stereotype. It's, it's, yeah. with the pressure as well. You know, they yeah. have so much pressure as well. Yeah. And it seems like that's kind of overlooked, but if you really look deep into it, you can tell that that's what it is, because even just from their upbringing, most of the time, they're pressured to get the best education, get the best, you know, the highest paying job, or making sure that your family is taken care of. And like, you see it in your own home as well. A lot of black yeah. people don't see that in their home. So it's a difference, you know? Yeah. Unless you make your mind different and want to do something different, honestly. Do you mean you think it's like, because if, when you talk about the household, like if, if something goes wrong or they fall short, that it's automatically sort of placed upon the white father figure, you think, that pressure where it's like it's his fault? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it. And at the same it's time, it's not just the movies. <laughs> but does that you saying that's not the same in in black households? Is it more that most more of the even? Time it's either a one household where the dad takes care of. If it is a dad in the house, he might take care of him. But you hear complaining. You hear different things going on behind the scenes. Yeah. It's not always a happy home. It's just like. I don't have any pressure from my family. They treat me like a babe and give me money. <laughs> I get pressure from people who are racist but don't think they are. Fair. It's like you see it, you, you identify it, and this is... No, I don't think this is him doing this instead of going to therapy. I think what he's doing here is like a shotgun approach to conversation. He's throwing out in uh, just a ton of different talking points to try and get them to latch on and like find a point of agreement on one or two things that he can then hone in on and be like, ah, see, yes, you agree with my points. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a like a conversational process to tokenize them for sure. Yeah, the a weaponized gish gallop for content. It's what it is, you know. Yeah. Either it's a one woman home and she's doing everything herself. And or there's a father in the home, he's always working. Yeah. And she is responsible for she works for mm -hmm. the front. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Yeah, it is a start. Why do you think that is? You say it's either like a one, uh, one parent household. Why do you think? A lot of times, people don't want a responsibility. They want to live their life. They might start off acting like they want to be a part of. It. But then it's, it's like the immaturity of they're not mature enough to really put their needs last instead yeah. of putting them first. They can be a better person, a better father, a better mother. You know. But if they put their needs first, everybody has a choice. Because I could be a mom and be like, well, I want to take care of my kid. You know, that could be a choice. But somebody else might be like, well, I, I can, I'm a dad. I don't want to take care of my kid, you know, and that yeah. can easily But a mom can't leave that easily because right. most of the time she's the one who's taking care of Do you think it's both, though? Because this is one thing in talking with, with people, like, you will hear, um, Obviously, a lot of uh, black women talk about fathers who don't want to take responsibility. This. But if you talk with black men, sometimes they'll say, well, no, wait, I do. But it's a system where sometimes they don't want me around. Right. Um, and it's a child support and alimony thing where I want to support my kids, but I don't want to support a lifestyle yeah. um, that isn't supporting the kids. So they, do you think there's truth to both sides of that? There is. There is? Yeah, some people take advantage, but the ones who really need it don't. But there's always going to be a, a, a group of women who take advantage of that. And that's if you're rich or not for it. Well, see, that's a balanced view. Yeah. Which, that's what we're talking Like, in the white community, you don't generally see that. You would, If I would ask the uh -huh. white woman, you'd be like, no, it's, it's only the men who are deadbeats who are losers. No, and then if you would no ask a lot of white men, they'd be like, yeah, I'm a piece of shit. And they get browbeat. You know, they just, yeah. they just take it. Yeah. They take it. They do. No one says this. <laughs> they do. They, they often do. It's a, yeah. and, and that's not healthy. I know. It's not but healthy. They, you know, this can't, I, don't, I can't put myself in that man's shoes, but... This is, like, really weird. He's He's, like, trying... He's, like, trying so hard to get them to say... Say shit. You know? It just feels like the weight is the weight is really on him. Yeah, this is yeah. highly the divorced the weight energy. Is really yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, think of how many songs, right? Come on. I mean, Tupac was always rapping about his mom. I don't really think you have, I can't think. Are there, are there any white guy songs about... Mama. I'm sorry, Mama, from Eminem, but that's about cleaning his closet, like spring cleaning and shit. Mama, Mama, I'm coming home. Right. Mama, I'm coming home. Yeah, it's Ozzy Osbourne, but that, it doesn't have the same meaning. I mean, yeah. if you look at... <laughs> yeah, that's just silly, it's silly stuff. No, that's a good point. Yeah, it's kind of more mate. Well, what's funny about that though too is, like you said, it's kind of like more matriarchal, like centered around the mom. Mm -hmm. But I would also say that that um, generally speaking, compared to what like black people, both men and women are, are more comfortable with the idea of like kind of traditional gender roles. Mm -hmm. Like they expect their men to be stronger. Well, which one? Uh, Black women. Yeah. They want a stronger man, whereas often, like in the white community, it's kind of like 
stability. And being more sensitive. And sensitive. Yeah. Being all right. Stability and sensitivity. Everybody wants stability, but that, I mean, even look at all the athletes. They're always with, they're not with their culture. They right. go for another culture, right? Yeah. Because they grew up wanting stability. Mm -hmm. They have nothing in common. Right. They don't speak the same language. Yeah. But. Yeah. And then some athletes just beat the shit with an open exactly. elevator. Because that's because they're weak too. Yeah. Whoever went for the weak man went for the weak woman too. Yeah. Yeah. Them strong enough to keep it up right here. They are both right here, no matter how much mm -hmm. money. Do you think that's something that um? You think that's something that's that's lacking just in general, like the idea of hey being a strong? Because it doesn't mean that it's my view is it's sex isn't necessarily like a strong male figure, like masculine role, and a strong mother female role, but you complement each other. And now it just, you know, that's a big struggle right now where a lot of the yeah. roles just seem completely blended, where yeah. it's not a team, a partnership. Do you think it's a little more clear in the black? Even, the, you know, start discounting or disregarding the single parent household, do you think that's something that maybe is more clear in the black community? As far as like, yeah, okay, you're a man, I'm a woman, and we're okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. It's clear, honestly. Uh, I came from a mother and a father, a two parent home, but I still feel like my mom did the work. My dad did provide, but. He was more like the disciplinary. Mm -hmm. and she was more like the home taker, home caretaker, and the mother, and the you know everything. Well, that term is relative because yeah. you know if you had two black parents, they were both more disciplinary than a lot of white parents in 2023. Yeah. I mean, I go, I go to the mall. I see black mothers with their kids, and what, what? Like, can you stop? They have them on leashes and shit. and black moms are like, you better stop. The kid knows, and they get right in line. There's not a lot of discipline in the white community right now with, with kids. Um, yeah, okay, I see that eye roll, right? So you you see that, right? And do you think that it's a it's kind of lacking? It's a good thing to have more discipline with kids, more traditional discipline? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I remember when I was in school, like you, you actually get paddled. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it wasn't just the parents; it was actually, you know, just any adult figure in your life. And, yeah. And it started with the teachers because you're in school all day long. Now, I mean, you you look at a kid wrong, and they're gonna call the police on you. So yeah. it's just, I don't I don't know where I don't know where that started to fall by the wayside as far as far as the disciplinary uh, portion. Uh, within the home and with and within the school system. I mean, it's like I feel like it started there, and then gradually the kids kind of figured out. Oh well, we can get away with this at school. Maybe we can get away with this with our parents too. So yeah, that first kid that called the cops on their parents, and then it just kind of <laughs> went by the wayside from there. It's like, I mean, what happened to parents actually being able to? I mean, I'm not saying physically abuse them, but I mean, spank you know, them. Yeah, keep them in line. Yeah, go outside. Pull that switch off the tree. Yeah, bring it back here because I'm gonna beat your ass. Because you, know? <laughs> you know what you did. Uh, I, we need so much of that. It, it would, I think there would be so fewer problems just in the world in general if kids we, were if we disciplined. Yeah, seriously. I remember because oh, you know, I, was, I was a little And uh, also was you know raised in, in a very white area of Canada. And uh, they told us, they had that whole conversation, you know, no, no one's ever allowed to touch you or spank you. And so they said, you call, you know, you call CPS. And one time I threatened my dad. I was like, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call Child Protective Services. And he just looked at me and said, no, you're not. <laughs> that was his, no, you're not. And he made me pick my wooden spoon. Uh, and he was, <laughs> but he was, I would tell you this, what I do appreciate about my dad was he was very, um, I think the balance is, you know, I have two-year-old twins, and so we have to kind of figure it. And they're at the age where they're so sensitive that, like, you know, just even, like, putting them in a chair and a time out, it works, you know what I mean? But I know at some point, if they're like me, that's not going to work. Certainly, my if my son is like me, like, I would get a timeout. When I'm, what, I'm going to my room and playing Super Nintendo? Like, I didn't do anything. But the balance was, I know that with my dad, he would make me pick my wooden spoon, and I'd get spanked, like, depending on the offense, you know. Um one spank or like three spanks you know and i'd have to do it and kind of take it like him and then after that though it was over right and my dad and i were really close we're really we're still like best friends to this day we're, but i still respect He's my producer. Him, but that's why we were close my mom occasionally like i could tell she was mad mm -hmm. like a little part of me was like i think she's enjoying this mm -hmm. <laughs> and that i think bothered me more whereas i knew my dad didn't like it like my dad didn't want to it's like you can't do this you know you just burn down half the shed i have to discipline you 
Whereas my mom, like, don't talk back. Well, oh, she's French Canadian. She's like, don't talk back to your mother. And like, I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is gonna sting. But not that, not that either of them had ever like crossed a line. But uh, yeah, I think as long as it's not done in a way that's like an emotional thing, it's you're just right. this is a consequence thing. And now and explain exactly why you're doing it. You know, yeah. I, I love you, but you. So the issue here is that child brains don't work like this. Like child brains work along logical consequences. Like, hey, when you are doing this thing, you act this way. As a result, when you are doing that thing and you act that way, I am like, you're going to have to take a break to calm down. You know? Like, if you sit down and you're like, I am beating you because you did that thing, all you're teaching a child to do is how to fear you. Right? And that will, that, that will absolutely work to get a child to do what you want them to do. But it won't actually help them to learn why. It won't help them to learn, like, coping skills that will allow them to, like, identify behavior and then, like, change accordingly. All it does is teach them fear. All it does is traumatize them for, you know, your short-term benefit. That that's it. You've done this. This is the consequence to what you have done. You yeah. Know? But just let them know. I still love you, but I gotta do what I gotta do. You know. Do black pants do soap in the mouth? Do they do that? Did she do it? Yeah, that would be like if you you know dirty words, but yeah. they did it with my brother one time, because he was my older brother, and he convinced me that I was adopted. Mm -hmm. Not everybody does that. My brother did that to my little sister. Everybody crying. No, he, like, convinced me I was adopted. You really, you really did. did believe And they go, like, find my parents. Like, he helped pack my bag, you know? That's what my brother used to act. <laughs> also, and I just want to say how irritated I am that someone used all of my cl cl uh, climbing ropes in Death Stranding to get to the top of this area, and then didn't throw the ropes back down. So now I have to climb up all of these areas by hand. My dad, I remember he grabbed a bar of soap. He was like, now what you just did is the worst thing you can possibly do to your little brother. That's worse, that's, that's an awful thing to do. And so I'm going to wash your mouth out so you never speak these kinds of things again. I'm like, okay. And uh, he never did it again. At least not when they found out, you know. <laughs> But yeah, and then uh, it, it definitely is, I would agree with you on that. And it's just like, if I were to say this, like you were just talking about, say this on campus with, you know, predominantly um, upper or upper middle class, like white people, particularly women, they'd be this right here would horrify them. Mm -hmm. Or I can't believe that's abuse. It's like, there's a difference between, if we can all agree that beating uh, kids is bad, right. disciplining kids is necessary. Exactly. We well, can't even have these conversations. This is kind of goes back to the idea of how isolated, sorry. I'm gonna leave here with a perm. This isn't on, is it? No. I'm gonna leave looking like house party. Um, but uh, we can't even have these conversations a lot of the time, like in the white community, just because it's like disagreement is just boom, cut off. We're very segmented. I don't understand what's wrong with having an, an open conversation. I mean, and you can agree to disagree, but yeah. just have the conversation. But people be uncomfortable with the conversation, I believe. They don't want to, people don't like real conversations. They want to hear like something that's going to make everybody feel better. Yeah. Yeah. That's not going to offend anyone. That's not going to make anybody ruffle any feathers. Everybody's going to be okay. You don't have to talk about that. And then that's talk about it. Wife. It never changes if you don't talk about it. No. Do you think some of that extends though to like to, for example, from, we're talking about like kind of between white people, but like from the black community to the white community a little bit because white men have been browbeaten as everything is racist for so long that they're just afraid to say anything. I mean, do you think there's some of that? Like, how, at what point do you think, for example, if, like, I'm, you know, me, um, and so one of my good friends, Nick DePaulo, he's like one of the best ever. Um, he did a show with a guy, Patrice O'Neill, who died too young. He was kind of placed to become like a Dave Chappelle. And all they did was just, for example, racist jokes. That was their show. You know, it was everything like, you dirty guinea from the you know. And then, of course, all the racist would say to the giant 350 pound black guy. But they're really good friends. When do you think it crosses over? Or is it like, you know, on the comedy? That's a big conversation. I mean, you see what happened in Dave Chappelle. 
from the LGBTQ and B side, but that's kind of a con that's kind of something we've seen from like black for a long time. There's this policing of entertainment in a comic. Where do you think that kind of thing is? God damn it. God damn it. I'm not even, I'm just, I'm not even ready to, I don't listen to a lot of people. I don't really listen to a lot of people. But I always hear the, the fall. Yeah. I hear, I hear the afterwards. Yeah. So, um, that's their form of expression. So, I feel like, hmm. Like, if you're a comedian, you know how the jokes go. It's up to you whether to sit down and listen to it. Yeah. You know, because somebody can get offended, but you know what he might talk about, what she might talk about. You know, if you go there and you get offended, you're like, wow. Yeah. And there you and just like, it's right. just their profession. It's there to laugh. So yeah. if you're not going to laugh, you should do that. Yeah. What do you think about like people saying like that was a racist joke, so this guy needs to be banned? Yeah. No, no, that's just. You shouldn't have came to the show. Mm -hmm. And you have to Everybody ban. Everybody like... just sign a waiver when they get their ticket. <laughs> yeah. Like, might be some offensive language, you know. Yeah. I mean, you have to ban like ninety percent of black comedians. Let's be honest. And that, but it, it, it will make them like they make the decision when they want to show up. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's right. But that's not what we're really seeing. Like, the problem is now they're trying to say, oh, hold on, I don't like what this person said. So no one should be able to go and see. Well, yeah, that's like Dave Chappelle, you know, our venues. I mean, I got, um, you know, I got in trouble. It's just they're like, oh, you can't because I do impressions. I do impressions of black people, celebrity. At what point does that become appropriation? Like, so it's okay to do an impression of Donald Trump, but not Pat Williams? Like, does that seem, like, is that, is that, some people try and say now that doing an impression of a black person is like black face. I was just about to say that is totally not the same thing. If, if, if you were like white people from here, like, yeah. Be yeah, oh yeah, every every time every black comedian's white guy voice is like this, and we're like, you don't sound like that, but it's fucking So what? Right. 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 So that doesn't, like, that doesn't, that doesn't. Not at all. Then why do you think that? Why do you think that's such a big deal in the media? Because this is this is why we do like this. Because the media. Because they always want kids. No, yes. they want to that's control. That's what they well, want. They want to. They want to control the people on what they said. They want to have the power. So it's to me, it's all about power. Because they behind the scenes saying jokes of racist jokes. Yeah. You know they are. Yeah. They're not going to sit here and say, oh, yeah, you know, you're doing it. We're doing it too. Right. No, they're going to say, you're doing it. You know what? You need to sh switch your language. We don't like it. Yeah. And then go back in the back room and talk about what you just said a lot. Yeah. I feel like, and this is my ignorant white opinion if I were to listen to the media, I feel like there's there's been uh, no group of people when I've, I was, it dawned on me, I was watching CNN and like MSNBC. I said, there's, there's never been a group of people who are so overrepresented in media uh, than black Americans today without being represented at all. In the sense that <laughs> if you're like to look at the percentage, it's like, you know, 35% of CNN, they're black, but it's Joy Reid and it's Van Jones. And the, I'm, I'm sitting there because again, I've been in green rooms and stuff with comics. I'm like, the they're saying that this is what the black community is bothered. Like, that's not, that's not at all what I hear. No. Do you know what I said? They want to be in control. Yeah. If it's not true. Like, I mean, it's just like how they say people are cheated with the votes. Even if somebody wanted, whatever they want, it's going to happen. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's not even about what even if people say, because you see the crowd coming. Yeah. People are there to hear you last. Yeah. So for them to say something other, that's almost like the sky is green. Yeah. But it's really good. What? Yeah. They just want to start. Well, know, they, they want to divide start. people yeah. for sure. Um, and that, that is something Divide, that, exactly. Yeah, they absolutely do. Like, like Van, there's no clear example of it. I don't know if you know, you know Van Jones? He's, see, this is a perfect example. All liberal white people know Van Jones. Like, oh my God, Van Jones, he's such a great voice for the black community. And then every time I ask a black person, I'm like, who, Van Jones? <laughs> and uh, he was on CNN, just, this was like in the last 24 hours. So there was a Republican debate, and uh, this guy, Vivek, from, he's a, an uh, Indian American guy. And I like I'm sitting there like, oh, this is the kind of thing that he said that would actually like black people would be like, that's yeah. funny. So you know Chris Christie, big fat guy, they like, on the stage, he said, Yeah, he said, he said, you know, he said, no one's voting for you. He said, so why don't you just walk off the stage, go have a good meal and like set, settle down. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, eh, yeah, see exactly. And Dan Jones, the CM, he's like, I was so offended by this. I'm literally shaking. I'm like, I can't imagine a black can you imagine a black guy saying that here? Like, you were shaking that someone <laughs> told a fat joke to another dude? Right. God, yeah, no. Not.
<laughs> we end up probably looking at them crazy, like, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I think it's trending right now. Right now, Van Jones like, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. He's like, this is. I was shaking. I was so offended. Like, I can't tell you, like, if, if comics, if you go into a green room, like, you put on a few pounds, you have a black man, like, you fat, you fat mother, <laughs> like, that's a freaking like, this, this right away. Like, that was. I think that's where there's so many good black comedians too. Like, when people talk about we need to like, affirmative action. There's one place you don't need it. First off, I think that that's racist, saying we need X amount of black people, we need X you know, amount of women, X amount of white people. But if you look at like the top 10 list of comedians. If Steven Crowder has such good, has such faith in his uh, ability to impersonate black comedians, why isn't he pulling out that amazing ability right now? Why, why, uh, why would he not want to do that? I'm just, I'm just curious. It's an amazing skill he has. But uh, he doesn't want to pull it out. That's strange. It's weird, even. Nine. Top five. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to agree on Richard Pryor's, Eddie Murphy's, Dave Chappelle's. Right, like there's a huge percentage of black people. Now, no one said we need this amount of black comedians. I think a big part of it comes from this, a culture of talking, of, you know, busting balls, like for sure. Like they, they're, they're okay making fun of each other. Um, and that's one thing to me that I just sit like, well, when we talk about like how everyone's underrepresented, like, well, okay, we're talking about the NBA, we're talking about the NFL. What about comedians? Like that's a perfect meritocracy. Black people are tend to be funnier than white people. Just because white people like, that's what, I'm basically saying Van Jones is white. Mm -hmm. When he says, I'm shaking, I'm so oh, offended. I'm like, that yes. sounds like something my liberal uncle would say, like white guilt uncle. That does not sound like anything any of my- By the way, when people are talking about like, the idea of race as a social con construct, this is what they're talking about. What, what Steven Crowder is doing right here is, you know, race as a social construct. You know, the idea that Van Jones, regardless of skin color, is acting white. That can also go in different ways, you know. Uh, you know, the go-to example we had was that uh, the, those two white boys in the uh, um, Channel 5 video uh, who were accepted by their African-American community and, like, for all intents and purposes, as black. But, like, Steven Crowder here is um, weaponizing this concept to be incredibly racist, of course. My black guy friends would ever say. No, I think so. But, uh, Ironically, Stephen Crowder would also never recognize social constructs. He had biceps and triceps in your back. Yeah, I can see he got buffed up. He wouldn't be offended. He got. He was just offended. So that's what made him act like that. He, he, that was his defense mechanism, to be the victim. There you go. Do you think that's a big thing, that the race to be a victim? Yeah. Like the victim mentality? Because it's trending right now. Look at everybody who's coming forward with every allegation about all the fetish people and different things that's going oh, yeah. on. Everybody wants to be known as a victim, like, what was me? But you made all the decisions you made. So you win. You know what? Since you're making bring that up, I was just thinking about this. I think you're talking about the Me Too stuff somewhere. Like, we can all agree. It's like beating kids to that. Rape is bad. Like, just, I think we, just to be clear and right, like, it's a bad thing. We can all agree. But considering that, okay. What? Like, uh, okay, it doesn't take a genius. Like, if you listen to, to hip hop or like, you, you know, you watch BET, like, like, sex sells in the black community, of course, right? Like, white people didn't even twerk them. But. There are far fewer accusations that you see from, like you're talking, like famous black women mm -hmm. against famous black men, and then you go back to like Mike Tyson. But it's just, it was just this huge rush of white women, and then there were some that were horrible, like Weinstein. That guy deserves to die in prison. But then there was like uh, Aziz, and he had a bad date. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's a big thing they're taught in college, and if you regret sex afterwards, it's mm -hmm. even if you consented. Mm -hmm. No one was putting 
Weinstein on the same level as, as Aziz Ansari. Back, are you? No one... No. Jeez. We're lucky to... Also, oh no, did he do just do sexual assault apology? Yeah. He did. Oh, they're so disappointed in how Good shitty work. my delivery New was. Order available. Please access delivery terminal for further information. But like, Aziz Ansari, to my understanding, didn't like sexually assault anyone. He like was putting like pressure on someone to put out and like they wound up not having sex. And like, yeah, like shitty, shitty dude behavior, but not like a sexual assault situation. It, that, that was my understanding of it. Again, this was a case from like five years ago, you know? Good thing you work on Twitch and not as a Prime Deliverer. True. Yeah, no, no, no. He He's presenting these ideas and then trying to massage them in a way to get these people to agree with him. Do you think that that's also like a problem now that, because that, I'll tell you this, men are afraid to, mm -hmm. to date. Because, like, they don't want to be alone with a woman, but particularly white women. Do you think that they're... Particularly. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Do you think so? What? There's particularly white women? Yes. Yeah. I don't, I don't ever heard of a black... It's all white women. <laughs> Mostly. I'm sure there's, Mostly. like... I'm sure there's one... R. Kelly? Well, he was p***ing on people. <laughs> I mean, they, they that's let him. entirely different. They let him. It's not like it's unheard of. They let him do that. Can I tell you? Yeah. I don't even understand how that works. Not to get dirty. Oh, my. No, I don't know. She's a <laughs> shit. Like, uh, you... like, oh, let me tell you. No, I remember when I first heard about that, I was like, okay, because look, like when a guy is aroused, there's a there's hydraulics at play. It's, you can't pee. Exactly. How do you? How do you? You have to get make... yourself soft. Mm -hmm. To in order to. To do it, which is what that. turns you on, right? That's terrible. Yeah. I, okay, but I'm not. Damn it! It doesn't make any sense. Anyway. <laughs> Teeth though. But it is. So, so you think? Did they though with R. Kelly? Because like, it was so gross. I don't remember all of it. Did they consent to it? All the girls? Mm -hmm. I never watched that. I don't. Yeah. I don't think all of it. No. I think some. But yeah. I just don't remember the. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the number. If he was like surprised <laughs> on someone's face, that's bad. Yeah. Like if she just like walked out of the bathroom and he's like. Ah! <laughs> you know, that's, that's a problem. But if they consented, it, it doesn't matter how weird it is. You know what I mean? Like, there's stuff that's like, hey, that's not my thing. Right. Right. That's how I feel. Yeah. Because, like, you consent to it, and, it, and then now he's in trouble, you know? Well, he might deserve it. He might, but they deserve it. Yeah, I'm going to move with seat closer because I can't. Now it sounds like we're on the Titanic with this thing going. Um, there was, yeah, I'm trying. Well, Bill Cosby. Do you think Bill Cosby did it? That's Jesus Christ, dude. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm putting that. Yeah, I mean, does a Oh, what he really liked was. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I do think that. I think that some of those were definitely not consensual. Yeah, it's uh, like. I'm pretty sure he I didn't did. hear about it. I mean, I heard that he did stuff, but I didn't yeah. hear the detail. I don't like listening to stuff today, so I don't. Listen. But he was just like America's darling. Every everybody, white and black, he was like the crossover. Everybody loved Bill Cosby, so he could do no wrong. Yeah. So I think that's just why he got away well, you can with so much. With nothing, anyway. Well, and I say he got away with it for so long, oh, yeah. and then somebody, you know, they finally decided to join together and you know, step up, speak out, or whatever. But you see how long it took to yeah. actually convict the guy, or I don't even know. Did they, did they convict him? No, he's out free now. Yeah, no, so they convicted I, him. Well, here's the thing oh, is, on. I don't order it. I mean, it's like, he, like he did go to jail, but then there was like an appeal. It was a whole yeah, thing. Yeah, his office thing got overturned. Yeah, got overturned. Yeah. I mean, I think that maybe, it's, it's tough to know, right? But what isn't interesting to me is if you were to say this to, in any group, White people would all be like, oh, absolutely, he did it. Oh. Like, of course he did it. Um, I think 
didn't think it was good enough for him because he, again, because he could do no wrong. He was just this overly uh, sophisticated, powerful black man who did no wrong and just had so many white friends who were, I mean, that was just, you had white friends and powerful white friends, oh yeah, you would you were you were something. You yeah. were something. So then, when they had that opportunity yeah. to, to to knock him down, oh, oh yeah, he did it. He did it. So don't so you think though too, like there's a statute of limitations for a reason that like, you can't if it happens, you can't come out 40 years later, right? That's I mean that that's a problem. Yeah, it is. I mean. Because you can't, you can't prove that if it's false. Oh, you can't prove it's true. Now it's just it's, the media. Yeah. All right. It just he said, she said. I mean. Yeah. And, your, your mind has changed. Everything has changed. So who can say people remember exactly unless you went to your diary and wrote down, you yeah. know, and we can go back and, yeah. Well, that's what happened with Jim, I mean, probably put uh, Brett Kavanaugh with the Supreme Court uh, Justice. And of course, everyone, this is one thing, it's like, I'm, I'm conservative, I'm a Christian conservative, so people will say like, oh, you're racist, no matter what, you're both like, like, that's why they'll just look at him, Justice Kavanaugh. I was like, first they tried to say he was racist, then they tried to say that he, um, he ripped, like that's how they tried to block him from the Supreme Court justice. And first off, this woman who made it up, Christine Blasey Ford, she, um, her story that she gave to the Washington Post didn't match up with the story of the cops. And the story of the cops didn't match up with the story of the friend. And the house that she claimed, uh, where she was, didn't exist. And the other people said that's that never happened. A lie. And then Kavanaugh, all of these diaries. are lies, my guy. And they looked at his journals, and his journals matched up like all the other journals. It's like, okay, you know, June 24th, he said he was going here, and they could see it from the year one. covered this. The athletic schedule. This where, lying you know, fuck. He didn't write going to gang or stuff on his journal. He right. wrote the opposite. And they go, you know what, it seems like this checks out, but that was the attack. Yeah, as we, as we all know, rapists do when they are about to go do rapes, they write down in their journals, I'm going to go do rapes. It is I, the rape man, here to rape you on June 23rd. Like that that's not a thing. This doesn't happen. <laughs> Dear diary, I did so many crimes today. They were going to use politically, and some people still believe it. Some people still believe it just because he was accused of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes that's all it takes. It's oh, just, yeah. just to put that out there, just to uh, you know, tarnish the name. Because you know, once it's out there, it's kind of a done deal. It's sad. I think this also goes back to the idea of you know, like we talked about, like white suicide. Because you said like, okay, Bill Cosby, and I think you probably did some of it. But I think that for sure, like white people in general are more likely to jump on board. Yeah, guilty. Black people for a black or white hurt are initially more skeptical. Right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Like, like if Johnny Depp was black, <laughs> he wouldn't have had his life ruined until we all found out about the You know what I mean? Like I think black people are like, I don't know, she sounds great. Right? There's two sides to this. Absolutely. But that guy lost everything. Yeah. Right? Because everyone she just said, oh, he did this. There was no proof. And he lost his Disney contracts, everything, until we got to court. But, oh my God, this one's a monster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was, that was a good thing, though. And that, that just showed that women can be cruel and, and just as ignorant as anybody else. You mean it. So, yeah, just to... to so I was actually very happy. I'm like, wow, she said all that. And, and that's another problem, that I feel like men are, are, are hesitant because women lie so easily about whatever. Yeah. And they believe it. Yeah. You know, and everybody, oh, because she's the weak, you know, one, and he's the, you know, the, the more dominant one. That's not true at all. That's no. very stereotypical. So, yes, I was very happy. I also think that um, it's funny to say that, but like, black people as a community tend to be more uh, forgiving Is that a yes. than white people in a lot of ways. Like, like in other words, okay, Johnny Depp, he obviously had an alcohol problem. Mm. I mean, like, so, okay, you can be a drunken weirdo and not be a domestic abuser. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think it was like, oh, listen to this tape where he's he's drunk and he's like cussing at her. He must be guilty. Well, now we know that she threw a bottle at his head before that <laughs> and broke his finger. But everyone was just so quick, like, oh, he's he's an alpha. He must so he must be bad. Whereas I feel like often, like, well, hold on a second. Two things can be true. No one's perfect. So let's wait. 
And I think that maybe maybe that stems from obviously like when we were definitively more racist country, the kind of idea of sort of it's like a public lynching with your reputation now. You know what I mean? They kill your name. Yep. And I wonder if it's just black people like ah, I've seen this before. Uh, I'm not going to go along with it yeah, until I get yeah. a little more. Yeah, more interesting. Yeah, black people. Yeah, so that's the way black lynching, people honestly they have to be convinced. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? No, I think yeah. That's why they follow trends. They have to see it first. You know what I'm saying? Then they get everybody see everybody doing it. And then it's like okay, I'm gonna go. Yeah. So the same way with decisions or anything like that, you know, they want to hear the whole story because most of the time you are so right because they want to. They're so in tune. They want to hear the whole story because they want to know what happened. Right. A lot of times, white people will just off the bat just from what they heard. Yeah. So you're right. Yes. Yeah. They'll go. They'll go right to. Oh, okay. The, you must be an animal. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you think of. Uh, like you think of, I mean, I'm, I think he did it, but like, okay, yeah. I mean, I'm, I mean, come on, I, yeah. I think he did, especially after he wrote the book, if I did it. Um, <laughs> but I think that it stems from, and some of it was just like, hey, we're skeptical because it could just be this is a famous black man where, you know, you could just be trying to effectively, I use the term lynch him, meaning like destroy his reputation. Um, yeah, that's and that's, you know, that's a lot of scenarios where I think there probably is today more value in that because people are so quick to just, you know, they use the term cancel. Um, do, you think, do, you, do you guys, is that something that you think is a big fear? Like, in the black community? Can I tell you, it's like white people are terrified of mm -hmm. getting accused or canceled. Or canceled. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's a benefit, right? To a like, black person. You get, you have more leeway. Yeah. Uh, not much, but yes. Well, <laughs> definitely more like in the black community. I was just listening. I was just listening to some black, like here. I was just listening to uh, a, like prior and eating like, and I'm sitting like, oh my god, you just switch this to from white to black, like you're immediately done. You're immediately done, and it's funny. Yes, it's funny, but yeah, I, I, that's a big thing now. People are afraid to talk in the white community. It goes back Jack's to the white. Are you terrified? What do you think? Like, what do you think is the? I'm terrified of. What do you think is the best way forward? Because. I will tell you this, I grew up, this is kind of why, why we started doing this is, I grew up, uh, I grew up in Canada, and I was born in uh, Detroit, but raised in Canada. And I feel like, I don't just feel, but statistically, I grew up in what would be considered a post-racial uh, America, North America, because I'm from Canada. But like the big shows were Fresh Prince, Family Matters, the biggest stars at that point were, I mean, the biggest film stars were Will Smith, Denzel Washington, um, obviously the Cosbys, and now, it's almost like here's black entertainment on this channel and here's white entertainment where now it seems like there's more of a racial divide than there was when I grew up and I don't mean as far as policy as far as you know, like Jim Crow laws I mean as far as I think people have been told that there's racism so much that people are actually just more afraid to reach across the aisle do you think that's that's true that's my feeling from the what yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. I can't answer because I don't know. I don't know. Because I don't know. 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 I growing up, but we just hung out. You know, it wasn't really like a big deal. Mm -hmm. And now when you have classes, people are being taught, like white kids, you check your privilege and you're being taught about racism so much. Like we were taught about slavery. Mm -hmm. We were taught yeah, that it was wrong. Is not happening. We were taught about the Civil War. That's because you're from the North. I'm from the North too, so it's different than it is here in the South. I don't think they ever taught people that slavery was good. No, not the slavery. I'm talking about the privilege. Like yeah. far as the mindset of different things. It is a difference between up North and Okay. Do you think though, do you think that's a good thing though to be instilling in children, like checking your privilege and making... Like that's yeah. Because I think you're creating racists when you do that. But there's, there are ways to to teach <clears throat> and not to make the... Uh, I just, I, but it kind of stems from home as well, the privilege as well, and then it goes to the school. No, it is part, part of curriculum. Sorry, we'll, is it part of curriculum? Well, go ahead. Well, no, no, I, I just, I feel like, like, as far as te teaching the slavery, I mean, or teaching about history or whatnot, I, I mean, you want to, t to teach people about sure. things so they don't repeat it, but you don't have to, to uh, browbeat the kids, like, I mean, because you're white, you know, you're an evil person. Right. You just want them to know what happened. This is what happened, and 
we don't want that to repeat. Uh, yeah. But I don't really feel like yeah. well, kids are innocent. Like you said, when you were growing mm -hmm. up, you know, you play with whomever and whatever. It wasn't even a big deal. But and then once you once you start to put that in their minds, then they're like, oh well, hey, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I shouldn't play with that person or whatever. I just feel like that. I feel like that's how do I want to explain that? It's like I just feel like te when you teach them teaching them in a way that won't um, that won't cause them to I don't know to, to, in, to in a way be racist because yeah it's that's, that's like you're teaching them racism um, well imagine you're a little white you're a little white kid and you don't know anything about it, but you're taught immediately and by the way it's also inaccurate to act as though slavery was exclusively an American white problem like that's just that's just not accurate to it happened it still exists today like there, there are no more... no classes teaching children huh. that slavery was uniquely uh an american phenomena just that the like manifestation of slavery in the transatlantic slave trade was largely predominantly fueled by america these are different things Steven is complaining them fun stuff. More slaves right now in the world today than ever. Because most of them are sex slaves. So we just sort of, because we are all way more free in the United States, we don't needed, have slavery. Really Black and white. We don't realize that in Asia, they in the Middle East, in Africa, slavery is still a way of life. And it's not based on race. It's based on whoever you can subjugate, you know? And that's where the slave trade started, right? Was was uh, West Africa and North Africa? Like we talked about this uh, not too long ago on a program. There were there were over a million, you know, white Mediterraneans who were just kidnapped off the Mediterranean coast and enslaved, like a lot, a lot. But they weren't just enslaving. It started in Africa, so a lot of slaves were black. But they also went to the Mediterranean and enslaved whoever they could find um, and sold them. And actually, that was a big thing. You know, think about it. You're in the United States of America. And at this point, slavery is everywhere. And uh, it's the biggest export, effectively, from that continent, right, from the African continent. And you want to end it, but you can't at that point, because everyone took the bloodiest war ever to end it. And largely white people, but white and black people fighting hand in hand. You know what I mean? Like, everyone makes mistakes, but to then instill into, and I see this, and I'm worried as someone who has young kids, white kids, where I don't want him to be made to feel guilty for something he had nothing to do with. Because I know that if you tell him, hey, you're basically garbage because someone did this hundreds of years ago. Yeah, that's a problem. That's gonna that's create more racism. Problem. Exactly. Yeah, that's a problem. Come on, school. Yeah, I'm talking about, yeah, in school. If you do that and you say, hey, you 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 need to, you know, atone for the sins of your, your great, great, great forefathers. Like, all of a sudden, as opposed to being that kid who's hanging out with, people of any race watching people of any race on TV you're going, oh, there's a separation here. And uh, I must have done something wrong to have born white. And yeah. uh, we see that now where there's definitely, I do think racist sentiments have gone up just not in the sense that they support slavery, but just people are afraid to talk. <laughs> and that's something that we, we run into quite a bit. So it just seems like- There's gotta be some some sort of a middle ground though. Yeah. You know, and, but finding it, that's, that's the, finding that sweet spot of actually just teaching about history, but not, again, making a person feel like trash. Yeah, again, like, Steven Crowder's upset that kids are learning about the transatlantic slave trade correctly and not in the same context, in the same breath as, like, the, the slavery that happened due to conquest. Like there are different types Thank of slavery and how slavery was contextualized by society that weren't by race. And what the transatlantic slave tri trade did was systematize and commodify slavery in a way that had never been done before. And it systematized and commodified slaves based on race. Because their forefathers, whatever, you know, makes... did whatever, whatever. I mean, when we're all you we all make mistakes, it's like if we all were taught hit if we all saw taught real history. Yeah. I mean, I think we would all give real each other history. some grace. Well, I think yeah, I think you're right. 
And I think, I do think that, you know, since public education, which has been a huge failure, by the way, on all fronts, white and black, uh, but it's been largely run by white people. Failure. Um, they've failure. done kind of what you were talking about, divide people uh, and try and say, hey, 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 hold on, look, look, we're going to give you this black community. We're going to do affirmative action or we're going to teach about slavery dudes. and we're going to make it all like 75 percent of Southern whites. He got pulled owned through a bunch slaves. of like that's a huge, huge majority, right? It's very small. And by the way, there were, there were black Southerners who owned slaves, too. Absolutely. So when you do that, first off, it's not honest. And then you create a division that is just going to perpetuate more racism. And I tell you what, I, I do see it with younger people now, um, more than I saw it in my generation, where they're either just completely guilted and they're afraid to talk about anything, or they go, you know what, screw this, screw you. I'm not, I'm not going to be made to feel like I'm racist because I was born white. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, no. oh, that's I mean, not good on either side. No, nope. both, both situations are bad. Yes. Nobody's talking, and it's, it just creates more divide. It's sad. And public education is terrible. It's awful. It's a real problem, and no one actually wants to fix it. It's not a money problem, too. There's plenty of money. It's just it's not going to the right place. Yeah, it's going on with private schools. I don't know if that's the mm -hmm. answer either. Uh, I, I know plenty of kids that were private. They went to private school and they're just as screwed up as the people that went to public school. Yeah, well, that happens too. You know, sometimes it's ugly things happen in pretty houses. A lot of people think if you're wealthy that mm -hmm. uh, you must not have problems, but it just comes with different problems than a lot of private schools. But yep. well, we've talked like we've talked about with public education the idea of school choice, which just means because right now, let's say you average in this county, let's say it's. Let's say it's $15,000 per student, right, is what we spend in tax dollars. If you just average out the number. One of the solutions that's been proposed out there, and I always talk about this, right, but I don't know how anyone can disagree with this, is rather than just send the money to the school, where they get it no matter how they perform, is attach the money to the student. Meaning, hey, this is how much we spend per student. So this student has this credit to take to any school that they want to. If parents want to drive them or if they want to get on a bus or if there's, I mean, here you have so many schools that are close together, right? Sometimes you're closer to the school you're not supposed to go to. But uh, the problem with school choice programs with vouchers is that it, it is a method of funneling money into religious schools, into for-profit schools. Like that, that's, that's the problem. And with uh, voucher programs, it defunds, it, it is basically a sideways way of defunding public schools. That, that's just how it is. And it isn't going to improve the schools that are currently underfunded. Those schools will continue to be underfunded. Even more severely.